What if medicine could redesign pleasure itself? Not to heal, not to cure, but to enhance joy. For centuries, medicine fought disease. It stitched, soothed and saved. But now, it dares to touch something deeper. Desire. Across the world, women are turning to procedures once unthinkable, G-spot and clitoral augmentation, treatments promising to awaken forgotten sensations. Yet the question remains, what exactly are we amplifying? Anatomy or expectation? Deep inside the anterior vaginal wall lies a region long whispered about, the G-spot. Some call it myth, others a hidden network, the clitoral complex, a vast orchestra of nerves and glands. Now, modern medicine wants to turn up the volume, using hyaluronic fillers, PRP injections, even fat grafts, to reshape the architecture of pleasure. But when we redesign the body's pathways of desire, what happens to the mind that feels it? Can pleasure be engineered, or must it still be earned through connection and self-awareness? This isn't just about surgery. It's about the quiet frontier where science meets sensation and humanity learns to feel again. Let's go inside. To understand this new frontier, we must first understand the anatomy of pleasure. For decades, the G-spot was described as a coin-sized area on the vaginal wall, thought to swell and trigger unique orgasms. Yet under the microscope, no single organ appeared, only a network. The G-spot is part of the clitoral, urethral, vaginal complex, a system where nerves, blood vessels and spongy tissues interlace like roots of a tree. Beneath the skin, clitoral bulbs swell with blood during arousal, pressing against the vaginal wall and converting pressure into waves of sensation. Thousands of neurons connected to the pudendal nerve carry these impulses to the brain's limbic centres, where emotion and pleasure intertwine. Pleasure, then, is not a point but a pathway, a dialogue between anatomy and emotion. This redefined the clitoris as far larger than once believed, an internal structure almost nine centimetres long, wrapping the vaginal canal like a hidden constellation. Here, many women describe internal orgasms, radiating through pelvis, abdomen, even spine. But sensitivity changes. Hormones, childbirth, ageing, even stress can dull these tissues over time. And so, medicine enters not to invent pleasure, but to restore or enhance it. From reconstructive surgery to regenerative therapy, a new discipline emerges, one that treats not just pain, but passion. And that's where the story shifts, from anatomy to intervention. Under surgical lights, a quiet revolution unfolds. Procedures once taboo now promise to reawaken pleasure. The most common, the G-shot, injects hyaluronic acid or PRP into the anterior vaginal wall. A fine needle deposits filler beneath the mucosa, adding gentle volume to amplify pressure sensitivity. In theory, deeper friction now translates to stronger sensations along the clitoral network. The O-shot, using PRP from the patient's own blood, takes a regenerative route. Platelets rich in growth factors stimulate new cells, blood flow and nerve activity. Some turn to fat grafting, transferring a woman's own tissue to restore fullness and softness lost through age or childbirth. Others choose laser or radiofrequency therapy, using thermal energy to tighten and rejuvenate tissue improving comfort and sensitivity. The results? For some, renewed intimacy, deeper connection, rediscovered confidence. For others, no change at all. Clinical studies remain few, outcomes vary widely. Risks linger, swelling, 
altered sensation, even infection. And beyond the biology lies a deeper question. Where does healing end and enhancement begin? Because to touch the anatomy of pleasure is to touch identity itself. For some, augmentation is liberation, a reclaiming of ownership. For others, it feels like pressure, the idea that even pleasure must meet a standard. Here, medicine and meaning collide. This is not only about tissue, but choice. Every age redefines beauty. But this century, medicine redefines pleasure. For millennia, women were told their bodies existed to serve, not to feel. Desire was silence. Pleasure, forbidden. Now, when freedom and technology finally meet, many are reclaiming what was once denied, the right to sensation. Some seek healing after childbirth or trauma, some seek curiosity, to explore themselves anew. Others seek confidence, a way to feel whole again. Doctors call it rejuvenation, but for those who undergo it, the word feels smaller than the experience. It's not about new pleasure. It's about remembering what was always there. Yet a paradox remains. As empowerment grows, so does perfectionism. The culture that tells women to love themselves also sells the idea that they're not enough. No filler can create trust. No laser can replicate connection. Pleasure, in its truest form, is built not by syringe, but by safety, empathy, surrender. Still, dismissing these choices would be unjust. For many, they're acts of courage, statements of ownership over their own bodies. In the end, augmentation is neither hero nor villain. It's a mirror, reflecting our complex relationship with desire itself. A quiet revolution is unfolding, not on screens or stages, but within the human body. It's not about beauty or vanity. It's about ownership. For centuries, women's bodies were examined, controlled, but rarely understood. Now, medicine is learning to listen, not only to pain, but to pleasure. Procedures like G-spot and clitoral augmentation aren't just about anatomy. They symbolise a woman's right to feel at home in her skin. Still, pleasure cannot be manufactured only rediscovered. Science may restore blood flow and nerve function, but only the mind grants permission to feel. Trust, presence, connection. These are the hidden architectures of every orgasm, every sigh. Perhaps that's the true essence of this movement, not chasing intensity, but reclaiming intimacy. To remember that pleasure is not indulgence, but a natural language of being alive. Technology may enhance the body, but only awareness can awaken it. Because transformation doesn't begin under anaesthesia. It begins in the moment a woman sees herself without judgment and realises her body was always enough. Pleasure, like knowledge, is power. And when spoken without shame, the body ceases to be mystery and becomes what it truly is, a masterpiece of chemistry, connection and courage.